All right, I guess we are live. Uh, this is my first time on Facebook Mentions. Uh, somehow, Facebook uh, saw its way to giving me a uh, blue check mark, and uh, I have no idea why. I'm not a celebrity. Uh, I'm not a journalist. Although they did just open uh, the stream to journalists on Friday, I think. So this is my first time trying out uh, Facebook mentions as a live video. From what I understand, uh, if you don't catch it live, you'll actually be viewing this as a uh, as an archive video, which will stay on uh, Facebook, unlike uh, some of the competitors like Meerkat and Periscope, which sometimes the video stays on for 24 hours, sometimes it uh, just disappears entirely. And if you've missed it live, then it seems that you've completely missed the event. So I hope to uh, avoid some of that. So I um, wanted to talk a little bit about what you'll be seeing in my weekly digital newsletter, The Week in Digital. Uh, but first, I wanted to start off with a trivia question. Uh, the trivia question will actually be included in the newsletter, but you're getting a uh, an advanced uh, view of it. Um, thanks, Owen. I, uh, my mom tells me I'm special, so uh, I'd, I'd like to think that, uh, that she's right. Um, but the trivia question that we've got uh, has to do with um, virtual reality. As you know, uh, Oculus Rift was purchased uh, a little over a year ago by Facebook for about, uh, it was either $1 billion or $2 billion. Either way, it was a large sum. Hey, Ken Young, nice to see you here. Um, and the Oculus Rift app, uh, uh, acquisition by Facebook was a significant event. And we've seen, uh, there's a Vanity Fair um, article, long form article on Mark Zuckerberg and uh, virtual reality, specifically Oculus Rift. And uh, they, there was a Wired article this week that mentioned the three industries that will most likely be deeply affected by virtual reality in the near term. So my trivia question to you is, what are those three industries that Wired mentioned? And Ken, the answer is not uh, Sherlock Holmes. Good guess, though. What I did want to mention uh, are some of the previews from uh, my weekly newsletter, The Week in Digital. And if you don't yet subscribe, I would encourage you to do so. Just head on over to scottmonte.com and check out the subscription button. Um, I wanted to talk about Apple. Uh, as we know, Apple made a just a minor announcement last week, I think. Um, they um, one of the one of the major uh, things that they announced. I thought uh, one of the, um, the differentiating factors that you'll see in Apple uh, now is this yearly renewal of iPhones. So you sign up for an iPhone and basically can lease your iPhone, but it's with a never-ending set of payments. Now I think this is in response to a couple of things. One. Um, the carriers we're seeing more and more are uh, offloading the cost of the phone to uh, subscribers themselves. So you're not going to get the um, the same kind of underwriting that you've gotten from Verizon and uh, AT&T and the like. Uh, so you're going to actually see a full price quoted for some of your iPhones in the future. Um, so this is, hey, Fanzo, good to see you here, uh, Mr. Livestream himself. Um, so you're going to see um, the, the cost of the phone actually causing a lot of people to double think whether they're actually going to go out and buy a new iPhone. Uh, what I think uh, Facebook did, uh, excuse me, Apple did here was um, making it painless. You know, if you have a, a monthly payment around $30, $35 or whatever it ends up happening to be, then um, if you just kind of keep that going, uh, it's not buried in your, your phone uh, charges this time. Um, but if you just keep that going, it makes getting a new iPhone every year that much less painless because it's a cost that's already coming out of your pocket. So I think we'll continue to see um, a lot of uh, loyalty, uh, a lot of uh, renewals uh, through, um, uh, through Apple's program. And I think it's a brilliant uh, move on Apple's part to actually create this kind of, um, well, let's call it forced loyalty in this auto-renew feature. Uh, if you're just joining, thanks. I saw Matt. I saw Trish. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, wanted to uh, just give you a preview on some of the things I'm talking about on my uh, The Week in Digital newsletter. Uh, and if you don't subscribe, head over to scottmonte.com and check it out. Second thing I wanted to mention, which was also related to Apple, but not specifically Apple-focused, 
Scott Stratton, unmarketing himself, welcome, sir, um, is a long-form piece in Forbes on Angela Arendt's. If you don't know Angela, she is the former CEO of Burberry, and Angela was hired away from Burberry about a year ago as the senior VP of retail for Apple. Uh, this is a woman who uh, has made her career in transformation and in motivating people. And what was most interesting to me about this uh, interview with Angela is a uh, point that she made about technology. Um, I'm going to pull up the quote here just so I have it. And again, this is in my uh, newsletter this week. She said, the more technologically advanced our society becomes, the more we need to go back to the basic fundamentals of human communication. And I could not agree with that more. This is something I talked about many, many years ago when I first joined Ford. Uh, our efforts in social at the time were all about bringing value to people's lives every day. So if they're taking time away from uh, their busy lives like you are right now, how are we providing value to them? Are we informing them? Are we making them laugh? Are we uh, causing them to rethink a position that they've had? Uh, and secondarily, it's about humanization. It's about that personal touch. You could argue that in this kind of interaction that we're having, you're seeing my face, I'm seeing your comments, that that's a human touch. But the more brands actually have the opportunity to use their human capital to uh, to, inter, uh, to interject and to engage their, uh, their, their customers in any number of ways. It could be in retail environments. It could be on video. It could be on Twitter. The more you can provide that human touch, the more loyalty and the more uh, trust you're going to see from customers uh, overall. Thanks very much for that comment, Trish. Um, uh, as I said, I I'm kind of experimenting here, so we'll see how it goes. I'm not one to usually just talk right into the screen. I like talking with other people, so a little bit out of my comfort zone here, but Facebook gave me the opportunity, so I'm giving it a shot. Uh, the last thing, before we get to our trivia answer, uh, and if you haven't seen the question, uh, I'll remind you, it is what three industries does Wired say that virtual reality will uh, greatly impact in the short term? What three industries will be most impacted by virtual reality? Um, so, uh, last thing I wanted to cover from the newsletter, giving you guys a special preview before the newsletter comes out uh, tomorrow morning, was, uh, it's a little bit of con controversy. I, I think it's kind of a tempest in a teapot uh, right now, but um, Burning Man, you know, the Burning Man festival that happens out in the uh, North uh, Nevada desert uh, that a lot of uh, folks from the Silicon Valley area go. Laura DeVoe, welcome. Robert Scoble himself is here, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, that's great. Um, just trying out this new streaming uh, technology. And I, I, I hate myself for interrupting myself, but I did want to say hi to uh, folks as they join. So, um, so Burning Man is suing Quiznos or considering suing Quiznos. I don't know if you've heard this. Um, evidently, Quiznos produced a, a pretty clever parody of uh, the Burning Man Festival. And um, it, it was kind of a, a trope on the whole uh, anti-capitalism uh, format of, uh, of, of Burning Man. And Quiznos, uh, I think, did a very clever job looking at how Silicon Valley is basically just, um, you know, infiltrating this event, which was really supposed to be something more pure and very anti-capitalist. Um, Burning Man now is basically claiming uh, use of intellectual property that does not belong to Quiznos. My personal, uh, sorry, uh, Jeremy, no bow tie, Sunday night. Come on, I got to relax a little bit. Uh, my personal opinion on this, and I'm not a lawyer, is that uh, Burning Man's going to have a hard time with this. Um, with, yeah, they are known to sue Owen. They're going to have a hard time with this lawsuit because this is parody. And parody is traditionally or traditionally has been protected on intellectual property lawsuits. It usually is fair game. Um, so we will see how this all plays out. But in my newsletter tomorrow, you can see uh, the video embedded there as well as some commentary on a whole bunch of other things. So those are just uh, a few of the highlights coming in uh, the Week in Digital newsletter tomorrow morning in your inboxes if you do subscribe. And if you don't, get on over to scottmonte.com and check it out. Uh, so just winding up here, I wanted to come back to, um, Ken says the, uh, the trivia answer, music, travel, and gaming. 
as the three biggest industries to be immediately impacted by virtual reality. Um, those are all good guesses, Ken. Um, hey, Z! Oh, my, my favorite cafeteria lady from Regent Court at Ford. It's good to see you here, my friend. It's been a long time since we've chatted. The, uh, the answers uh, to the trivia question, the industries that virtual reality will impact next are real estate, mental health, and design and engineering. And I think this is fascinating because if you consider real estate, um, what better way to have a 360 degree view of the homes that you're interested in? Uh, it's better than the flat photos. It's better than the clunky 360 degree uh, Charlie says sex, travel, and education. I like your thinking, Charlie. Um, but what better way to see homes that you're interested in uh, than in virtual reality? Um, mental health. Uh, this, this, I think, will go beyond mental health and into a lot of telemedicine, as it used to be called. Uh, I think we'll see a lot of physicians uh, taking to the screen to actually interact with patients when they can. Uh, and that's going to help people in remote areas. It's going to help people perhaps who can't get out of the house. Uh, so mental health would be fantastic. So Jason, right there with you. Um, Robert seems to think that uh, porn will be disrupted first. Uh, what do you, uh, is it? Is it a Sunday night thing? I, I would have expected this out of you guys on Saturday night. I don't know. Um, the uh, and the last one, design and engineering. You know, think about. Um, how designers, particularly in the automotive industry, have traditionally had to use clay models and then, of course, CAD uh, engineering, CAD systems. Uh, virtual reality is going to be absolutely tremendous. It may even affect the way we purchase cars, the way we research and, um, and come to our car buying decisions. So uh, expect to see more about that. I've got a lot more in this week's newsletter on virtual reality. Uh, get on over to scottmonte.com and subscribe. I'm going to call it a night. Uh, it's been about uh, 10, 12 minutes here uh, spending with you guys. If you haven't seen it from the beginning, I'd encourage you to rewind and check it out. Thanks for being with me on my first Facebook Mentions live stream, and we'll catch you next Sunday night.